I'm Nate Brownlee. And I'm Liz Brownlee. And you're here on Nightfall Farm. We're in Crothersville, Indiana. We are entering the sixth season here of our farm. And on our farm, we do pasture-raised livestock. So we're doing pasture-raised chickens, turkeys, pigs, sheep, and we do eggs as well. We sell to a 50-member CSA. We've got 50 shares. We sell in three different communities at the farmer's market and to a couple chefs here in southeast Indiana. Uh, my degree's in cultural anthropology. Uh, and my background's in uh, biology, ecology, basically. Yeah, so we didn't set out to be farmers. Um, we, I grew up on this farm and had no desire to be a farmer. Um, but we both fell in love with food. We saw it as an answer to environmental problems. Um, we saw it as a, a way to live out our ethics. So we started working on other people's farms just to see, like, what does this even mean? And what is a day like? And um, we just fell in love, right? Like, we... We're working on veggie farms and then farms that had livestock and we were working as uh, farm educators and we were working as vegetarians and then realizing that you know we could participate fully in the life cycle of animals and be comfortable with that mm -hmm. so we are now meat eaters and so we've grown a lot in yeah. the in the process yeah so we spent five years working on other people's farms in pennsylvania and then maine and vermont and new york and um, those farmers were absolutely critical to us um, learning and now we've brought it all home, um, and we're trying to be useful to our communities here in Indiana. So while we've had experience with all types of farming, uh, we moved back and started with the meat. And some of the problems we've seen in the last five years has led us into our share grant. Yeah, so we realized we weren't the only ones struggling with um, access to good butchering. Um, so we had kind of all the standard problems showing up. You know, we didn't know if we were getting our own meat back, and uh, the meat wasn't packaged in a way where we could sell it at the farmer's market and um, we didn't have access to value-added products like um, jerky and um, charcuterie. So we got a SARE grant along with uh, our good friends, uh, farmer friends Dennis and Trisha Bowers and um, we are looking at um, what would it be like to have a farmer-focused butcher shop. Um, so we're working with a chef named Max and trying to really lay out an open source plan for opening a small farmer-focused butcher shop. So um, right now, soon on our website, everything will be there. Part of it's there now. Um, and it's going to be the equipment list and floor layout plan and cash flow analysis for a super small butcher shop that could serve farmers who are selling directly to their customers. And um, we're pretty pumped to say that we found some places where it can be profitable. Um, we found a few models that don't make sense, <laughs> at least around here. Um, and we're excited to share all of that. And then um, we also have a survey that we've been working with Indiana University on to look at um, what do farmers need, what's stressing them out, and what's preventing true sustainability, including social sustainability. You know, can we sleep at night? Do we know if we're getting our meat back? Can we be transparent for our customers? And uh, what are the opportunities if we had good butcher shops um, in every community? And so the results of that will be out really soon, and it's been fun to work with IU on that. Um, and we got to work with Purdue on a butcher shop tour. I mean, this has been a really collaborative project. It feels like we're moving in the right direction. Um, thanks to Sarah. We're, we're really looking forward to the next five years of, uh, five more years of farming and then a bunch more beyond that.